I'd like to introduce you to one of our closest partners at Epic Games, Real Effects, who've been working on a Netflix original series called Supergiant Robot Brothers. And now we'd like to take you behind the scenes of this groundbreaking animated series. For any students or young people interested in this creative process, starting to wrap your head around pipeline is critical because all of these CG projects are made by passing files from artist to artist to artist to artist. One of the challenges of a traditional animation pipeline is the rigidity with which you have to make decisions. And one of the advantages of doing it in Unreal is especially the way that we've done it with motion capture. You can make decisions as you are making the show. Echo! Echo! You have to stop saying echo to determine if what echo. you are doing so in Supergiant Robot Brothers, we mocapped the entire series before taking it into keyframe animation. If you're used to directing for live action, you're used to directing human actors, that sensibility translates immediately because you can just be in a room with real human actors who happen to be playing animated characters that you can direct in the same way. And that allows us to like be really playful and be really improvisational and sort of like find stuff on the stage and we don't have to be locked into storyboards per se or certain camera angles or certain scenes even. We can improvise, which is stuff that you normally can't do in animation. It's a shift in how we think about making animated content. And at the end of the day, filmmaking, whether it's live action or animation or really hybrid production, which is what we're talking about here, it's working together quickly. All of these decisions are done in a split second. Like, do you like this? Yes or no? Yes, I like it. Great, let's do it. No, I don't like it. Okay, let's do something else. How about this? And this extends to everything. Of course, for me, the most important thing is virtual camera or lighting. But if I have an actor there, we're just like, hey, can you stand here one second? Okay, I'm gonna go there. What do you think about this? Done, that is done. The other thing is that it doesn't cost us anything to try a different camera angle. Like we don't need to reanimate all of the characters to see it from a different angle. Literally all the characters are animated already. So it enables people who don't know how to animate a camera with a mouse, but do know how to move a camera in space, it enables those people to make an animated show. And at the same time, we have to remember that motion capture gets you most of the way there, but there is still a layout team that needs to integrate it with the actual animation. When you get a really good performance from your motion capture, it already puts it at a level where whatever you do above that is just is gonna take it to the next level. And Supergiant Robot Brothers, specifically one of the very most useful things was the hips and the feet. If you're doing it traditionally, you have a background and a drawing, and they have the character walk across the screen, but they don't actually physically have the space. They're just guessing. But when you've got the motion capture data, she's walking in that actual hallway, and her footsteps are exactly what you need. The other thing is that lighting can work at the same time as we work. So usually animation happens and then lighting happens in the pipeline. So you only actually see the finished image at the end. But in this pipeline, as soon as we have the sets, lighting can start. So they're doing a global set lighting. And that means that we get to see our renders way faster. And it means that they're not stuck waiting for us because in a traditional pipeline, every step kind of gets in trouble because the step before goes long every time. And who's gonna suffer the most from that crunch? It's lighting and compositing who are at the very end. It's all about communicating intent. So if you say, I think the lighting should come from this direction, and then you see that the actor decided to go somewhere else and the director just say like, oh, I love it. Actually do this as well as you're jumping around there. All of a sudden the lighting that you had in your mind doesn't work anymore. But you don't have to wait months to make that change. I can just ask the Unreal operator to just move the entire key light, and that happens in real time. We sometimes are shooting a couple hundred shots a day. There's something called selects. If you have a bunch of shots, you might not want to pass them all to editorial. 
so we would choose 20%. That's an example of how inspiring this process can be for creatives where you actually have too many shots. Once you send this massive volume of footage to editorial, then they're able to just play and be like, wow, like I would love a close up here. I love this angle, but can we get it tighter? And also I learned so much about all the other departments because we have to work so closely. I do think that the kind of decisions that I make and the entire team makes are just more effective because they're not in a vacuum, because they are built on top of the ideas of other people. And the other thing is that as you get more into it and you start learning how to actually write your own code or write your own tools, even things that the engine can do, you can figure out how to make it do. And it's a really, really rewarding feeling to have that synergy with a program like that. In this series, you'll work with Shazzy Angulo from Wild Brain Studios. Shazzy has created her own animated miniseries, Mitzi Makes It, all in Unreal. And now it's your turn to take two of her characters and create your very own animated scene.